Hello, welcome. It's Inventor Dan Zen here at ZimJS.com and we're going to be taking a look at mobile with Zim so that we can publish to Android, and WinPhone, and Apple devices using PhoneGap Build and we'll make a repository on GitHub and we'll be uh, showing you through the Apple development environment which is pretty crazy. So it'll be a several parter. We'll uh, we'll just try and get something on the mobile device here in this first long video, and then we'll continue to build out an app. We're going to rebuild the Tilty app, and uh, let's just get started. So we're in the GitHub desktop uh, application right now, and we're about to start a new project from the little plus sign on the left. It's asking us for a local path, and we browsed to a Tilty folder in the Zim folder, and we're going to hit OK, and we give it a name, til Tilty, like so. That ends up putting the repository in a Tilty folder inside of Tilty, and that's OK, because sometimes we want a place for raw assets and stuff like that that don't have to really be part of the repository. So we'll put those in the Tilty folder here, and then anything we know we want to put on the GitHub we'll, we'll put in, a, in the capital T, Tilty. And so we create that repository, like so. And uh, there we are. We're ready to carry on and put folders in it and so forth. We're now inside of Atom. And we can see that the Tilty folder is over here. And there's the Tilty folder with the capital T that's our repository, along with some Git stuff that you can ignore. Here's another mobile app called Touchy which had a, uh, a www folder and a config.xml and an index.html. Those are the basics of what you need to be able to publish to the Adobe PhoneGap build. So we can make those folders now a new folder. And this one is www. Enter. And it's in there that we need an index and a config. We'll just copy this config, copy, and paste it into the uh, www. And we can do the same with the, well, for the index, that will be our probably a Zim uh, template. So we'll go get that from the Zim template. The config file. Uh, you can find there's a PhoneGap start repository, PhoneGap start, PhoneGap build start, Phone, PhoneGap start repository, where you can grab that an example config.xml. I've made a few modifications to it and so forth. Uh, let's just open it up there. So in here we've got the location of our of our app com.danzen.touchy. Well, this one will be tilty. Like so, a version, I'm not sure what version I'm on, so I'll have to look at that. And tilty here, tilty. Like so, let's make that a bit bigger for you. Uh, tilty and mobile game to touch a target on your opponent's screen, mobile game to keep your device level uh, while jostling others exclamation mark I don't think that matters too much there uh, there's other places when you go to um, upload your app where you put in information about it so you'll be fine Um, portrait, we will be in portrait, so that's locked in portrait. There's going to be options for that, full screen, yes, most of this stuff will probably be the same. Um, if you want to be able to link out to another website, you might need that. 
you'll have to read up on the phone gap build things. And then we start um, with our icons. There's the sort of the default icon. And then there's a bunch of icons that are, are needed for various other things. They keep on growing and changing. Pain in the neck. And so forth. And then for Android, there's more icons. And then there's a Win Phone and Blackberry. Hey, Blackberry! As well as splash pages. So you guys can go find my repository if you want and, and get all that stuff. And also in the repository, I will post a link to a Photoshop plugin that allows you to create all of these things with a script. So we'll see that too as we go along here. Uh, that's basically what our config file looks like. Whee! Right, so save that up. Now let's see what else have we got. Oh, the index, right? So I'm going to go grab that from the templates, or or we can make it. Let's let's just make it. So that's www new file, and we'll call this one index. Dot HTML. It needs to be an index.html for PhoneGap to pick this up. So now we can go out to a browser and go to Zim, hit code, and then just copy the template. So this is the, the recent template here. Copy. That puts it into the clipboard. And right click and paste. Or you can go to the Zim Zip and grab a template. This is a fit template. We actually want a full template. So uh, although we don't want this to say that at all, we want to give that our title. Not that it'll matter all that much. Tilty is the mobile app. And that will do. Now, we won't want to go to the internet for our CreateJS and for our Zim but rather we'll want to put those into um, a libraries folder for instance so i'll make a library folder libraries we'll call it and in there we can uh, put copies of these two things so how you might do that is just copy that url there go out to a browser paste and hit enter there it is, and then file, save, page as, and code, we are going to tilty, PQRS tilty, into tilty, into www, into the libraries, and there's a create.js min save there now. And the other one, the latest zim, so copy that. Basically do the same thing. Paste, here's the latest Zim. Save page as Zim 6.4.0, save. Okay, and uh, back here. We now have local versions of those in libraries, like so. typed in both places at once there. Uh, you know what I mean? Let me just undo that. So I'm going to replace this with libraries. I don't need to replace the slash. And then I hold down the control and I select all that and I type in libraries like so. In Atom that is. So, uh, so far so good. And then we come down, we're not in a fit mode. Well, let's just see what this looks like if we open it up in a browser. Open in browser. There it is, good. So that still works. And if we F12, we can see that it's a Zim frame from Zim 6.4.0. So all is good. We want to make that a full template. Therefore, the width, and as a matter of fact, we don't even need to pass in any scaling because that's the default. So we can just say, give me a new frame. 
And at this point, if we look at it in the browser, put the browser over here, get rid of my Facebook, whoop, <laughs> Facebook flash. Woot, woot, woot. And now we're in full mode. Uh, I don't know if you can tell any difference, but whatever. I suppose you can tell because if we collapse the browser like so, it's not stretching that for us. So we have to do our own scaling, refresh, and our own sizing. So if this were a ZimFit template, this would be a lot different. It would make a, keep the proportion and make a little circle there. And as I go bigger, it would make a bigger circle. But this is Zim full. And that's the index and that's getting us started. Uh, the config we played with, we've got libraries. We'll need to bring in our icons at some point. We'll probably make an assets folder, new folder, assets, enter. We can put our assets in there. Um, and so far, so good. Let's make the icons and the splash pages now. So in the www folder, we make a new folder called icon. Now that's singular. That's just how um, Adobe PhoneGap build um, likes it, PhoneGap. So icon singular. And in there, we will make a few folders, one for iOS and one for Android and one for WinPhone. Um, if I had known how to code making folders and stuff in the Photoshop scripts, I wouldn't need to pre-make these folders, but we're going to be going into a Photoshop script and I don't really know that language very well. So I found it just easier to make my own folders. And one for Blackberry, all right, rocking the Blackberry. There we go. And something similar back in the www, we'll make a new folder called Screen, I think, no, splash, I believe it is splash. Enter like that. And let's see, I'm sort of following along on the touchy one that was already made. Yep, splash. And in there, we're going to put a portrait folder because we'll only use portrait, but there's also landscape. And then that has an Android and iOS and a WinPhone. Okay, so in here, a new folder called portrait. And then inside of portrait, a new folder called iOS, or do you say iOS? Oops, and in there, a new folder called Android. These are all in the portrait, and one more for WinPhone. So this is where all of our splash pages will go. And it will pop out into Photoshop. Here's our icon. You want to make that 1024 by 1024, and then our script will reduce it. And I'll show you where we can find the script in just a bit, but for now, let's run it. Under Scripts, Make Mobile Icons, and we choose the file that we want to make the icon from. So that's here. And then we choose a directory where we want to make those icons. This is fun. Uh, local happening, and then Dan Zen, and then a thing called code, ABC code, and then a thing called tilty, PQRS tilty, and then tilty again. Now, do not say the icon folder. You want to specify the folder that has the icon folder in it. So that's www has the icon folder in it, and then it knows it can populate it in that icon folder into all those subfolders, and we hit OK. And off she goes. Da dong, 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 chug it a chug, chug it a chug. Mobile icons created, and we hit OK. Now we'll do the same thing for the splash page as well. I suppose we may as well just do that now. So here's the splash page. How that work, how the splash page works is it just takes a cut of the different sizes. So the narrow one would be cut like that, and the fat one for an iPad would be cut like that. 
and it just centers this in it. And if it were doing a portrait as well, it would take a cut like that, a cut like that, which means if we had a skinny portrait, this actually may not fit on it. We might want it a bit smaller so that it sits right in the middle of the, the skinny crossing there. Yeah, that's all right. I mean, you can make your own for real if you if you really want, but I've found that this works generally all right for for things. We're only making portraits, so we're only worried about that. And we go file scripts, make mobile splash pages. We choose that. Now let's see. That's not what we want. Do we have? Um, one called splash. Oh, I see that's a Photoshop file. So I just need to stop this for a second. And this is a Photoshop file. I thought we could specify a Photoshop file too, but maybe not. Save as images splash.png. PNG splash.png save. And hit OK. Let's try this again. File scripts, make mobile splash pages. There we go, splash page.png. And thank you very much. Choose the directory again. Does this look familiar? Uh, this PC and my D drive and Dan Zen in code ABC code in what was the next one? Tilty. Q-R-S-T-I. Isn't this lovely? Tilty. Inside of Tilty and the www folder and hit OK. And there she goes. Choppity, choppity, choppity. Still going. Choppity, choppity, choppity. Choppity, choppity, choppity. And could not complete action since destination folder does not exist. I think we're okay. I'm not sure what that destination. Oh, this is uh, doing all the horizontals, which we didn't make. And so you see how the horizontals do get chopped there. So we would have had to be a bit more careful, but we don't need to worry about that and hit OK. And now if we open these up, let's see, here's the icons folder and we look in there there's a bunch of icons made. Beep, 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 beep. Neat, huh? And for iOS, all of these different size icons, little small ones, little big ones. Uh, what about the splash page? Portrait Android splash. Yeah, there it is, a splash page. Looks okay, huh? Okay, so I think that will save you a couple hours doing that. Well, let's go see where we can find those Photoshop scripts. So we'll go to a browser and go to the Zim site. We want to find the Zim GitHub, which is available in the code section, for instance. And blah, 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 blah. See a GitHub anywhere? Actually, I don't see a GitHub there. Zim zero, Zim docs. Oh yeah, there's a, a GitHub right here. Or another way to find it, which may be easier, is just go to I had a scroll bar. Uh, just go to the bottom of any page, and there's the GitHub right there. And um, it's not in the Zim JS GitHub, but in back in Dan Zen here, uh, you can see some of the things that have been made hit the repositories. I'm not sure Psychic Pixels was made a while ago. I can't remember if I've updated these scripts or not, but hit the repositories and it's not in touchy, but it is in Vault 7. So I think that's probably the one I used from Vault 7. So if we go to Vault 7 or any of those other ones, there's Make Mobile Icons JSX and Make Mobile Splash Pages JSX. So you want to click on that and hit raw. And this is the script right here. You can save this as put the JSFX in the Photoshop app presets scripts folder. Ah, there we go. So <laughs> that makes it a little bit easier and it should then show up in your file scripts. Good. So that's where you find those two scripts to make our icons and so forth.
Now we're pretty well ready to publish our repository to GitHub. So we've made our icons, we have our config file, we have an index file, it's just a circle being dragged and that'll be fine for now. We just want to see how we can get our app up to a mobile device right now. We're going to start with Apple's um, system, which is the more complicated system than the Android system. So here we go. Uh, let's pop on over to the repo or to our GitHub. So here's our GitHub, and it looks like nothing's happened until you realize on the timeline here we're one step back, and there's this other dot here which is current. So we hit that, and now we can see that uh, we're in our current status. We've got a config file, an icon, all of this stuff here. And we now want to get this published to um, the website. Okay, publish master to the remote. So we can put a summary here. We can say uh, starting files or something like that. You can put a description in if you want. Um, usually, as I go, until there's more to describe that's relevant, uh, don't bother. And we say commit to master. And there we go. And now we publish, publish. So uh, Tilty on my Dan's end, GitHub, that's great. Description, mobile app to uh, mobile app game to keep device level as you jostle others and publish. All right, so that's been published to GitHub. It's now, instead of back down here, it's moved up. Uh, there's often a lot of trouble getting GitHub started. I've had trouble before for different reasons. Hopefully you followed what we've done. I think they've done a few things to make it easier, but there's often times where you're going, it's not publishing, it's only local, or you know, it's like, ah, oh, headache, headache, headaches, and stuff like that. So that does happen. My apologies. <laughs> now, under the settings here, we can open in our view on GitHub. So let's do that. So a view on GitHub. And we've arrived at Dan Zen Tilty now where we've got our www folder with our stuff in there and we're good to go so this is what's needed a public github repository that phonegap build will pull the files from there let's now take a look at what we're going to be seeing when we go into the ios developer site we need to make a developer certificate and that on Windows is a little bit tricky it's not too bad on on the Mac now all of their stuff was made to work with Xcode which is their development environment and they're kind of uh, a little bit like assholes about it as far as I'm concerned for instance we can't actually publish to iTunes to you know publish to iTunes unless we have a Macintosh it's like how petty is that <laughs> we're building stuff for your store and you won't let us publish this and it's not a tech technological issue it's it's just like I don't know they want to they're trying to encourage people to develop on a Macintosh I suppose so whatever whatever we have to go through some hoops to um, to get a developer certificate. We, well, we can get it, but then we have to translate um, it <laughs> to another another thing. But we'll, we'll go through that process. It's a fun process. We're we're now entering, by the way, kind of like a fifty step process. So wish us luck. Um, I once found this very complicated, this system, but now I'm getting used to it. It's all right. You know, it's still complicated compared to the Android system, which was, oh, it's done. 
<laughs> now the Android system's gone a step further and added some security there, so we have to get a signing key for the Android side now. We used to not have to. Anyway, here, here's what happens. We have to get a certificate, and then we need to provide a device ID and an app ID. So we've already made the app for Tilty because this is a, um, a further version of Tilty. And we already have a device ID made, but we'll be going to see those things. And then with these things, with the development certificate, uh, the device ID and the app ID, we can make a provisioning profile, what's called a provisioning profile. And that just says, um, we, we put this on the device itself. So this goes on to, um, we used to have to drop it into iTunes. Now PhoneGap Build handles all that stuff for us. So it's not as hard as it used to be. But each, each app uh, needs one of these provisioning profiles to be placed on the device. And then let's see, what else do we have to do? We've got to publish our, our app. And so that's going to come through PhoneGap Build. And that's where we can do the signing and stuff like that. So we tell PhoneGap Build what our certificate is. And we pass in the provisioning profile to PhoneGap Build. And then PhoneGap Build will make something for our iPhone. As a matter of fact, we can even use a QR code reader to just have that automatically upload. So this process has been simplified, believe it or not, to, um, to get onto our device here. When we actually want to publish to the store, we need to get a distribution certificate, which is something different. We then take... Uh, I guess our app ID, so it doesn't matter about the device, but we take our, our app ID and make a provisioning profile from the distribution certificate and that app ID. We put that to PhoneGap Build, and then we have to put that into some sort of application loader, which happens on the Macintosh, or there's sometimes there's services. Let's see, how did I do this the last time? I can't even remember how I did it the last time. But I do have the Macintosh now, so I could do it through that route. And then that gets published to the store. If you're in school, you might be able to have access to what's called the Apple University, at which point you can do this side for free in the Apple University account, but you can't do the distribution side. That costs, I think, $100 a year to be able to do that, as opposed to, I can't remember how much is it is on Android, I think it's 25 bucks, and I'm not sure if that's a one-time or if they've been billing me yearly. <laughs> I don't know, but less. That's the system that we're about to go in and take a look at. Let's go to the Apple developer site now. So that is Apple developer. So that's developer.apple.com. You'll need to have uh, an account, an iTunes account and that kind of stuff. And so I'm going to go to my account, not to develop. That just tells you about develop, but my account itself. I've logged in already. Good luck. Over the many years that I've been with Apple, I've had to uh, wrangle password issues a number of times or account issues because I've got so many devices and you know, it's like, argh, it's sort of a pain in the neck, but hopefully it's all getting a little bit better. They've consolidated this uh, a touch better where I've signed in. I can now go to iTunes Connect without having to sign in again. You used to always have to do that. So we've got two sides. There's certificate identifiers and profiles. iTunes Connect will get you set up to actually publish the app later, so we don't need that yet. On this side, the certificates and, and so forth, is where you get all of your um, things that we just looked at in that, in that diagram worked out. So here's my certificates now, uh, two of them, a development one and a distribution one. And there's a process that will take you through uh, after we just review what's here to be able to get these things. There we go. And then there's app IDs. So they're pretty easy to make. You hit the little plus sign and you can make an app ID. And so here are the various apps that I've worked on. 
uh, tilty is already there. So those are app IDs. <clears throat> Doesn't really take too much. Oh, you should notice though, tilty com dot tilty. The format is usually a reverse domain, inverse domain uh, situation. I'm danzen.com, so we start off with com dot danzen dot tilty, and that way we'll know that this will be unique in the world because nobody else is danzen.com except me, and tilty is the name of the app on the back of that. Then there's devices, so here's some devices that I test on, and we would need to get an identifier, <laughs> even that is mystical. <laughs> like, where the fuck do you get that from? It's nowhere. Uh, so we'll take you out after this and show you where you can find that ID. Um, and then in the end, you make a provisioning profile. So here are the provisioning profiles. Many of them have expired because they were created with a, a certificate that's expired. Um, I just recently activated my certificate to do Touchy, so we've uh, launched a provisioning profile for Touchy 3, and that one's active, and Touchy Store is also active because that was just made not too long ago. One is a development uh, provisioning profile, and the other one is a distribution provisioning profile. I usually call the ones that I'm going out to the store uh, something store. And that's a look then at the at the Apple developer side. We've got to do a couple things now. We have to find out how to how to make a certificate and uh, convert it and, and so forth. You only have to convert your certificate once, and then the provisioning profiles. I can't remember to tell you the truth. We may be able to just um, these days immediately upload a provisioning profile to PhoneGap Build, but we'll go through that process. All right, let's see what is involved in getting a certificate then. So in the certificate section, you would hit the plus sign and say what kind we need. We need a development one to start, as opposed to a production where you would have to um, use one of these to get to the store, this one right here. But that would come later. So a development certificate. You know, pop on down and it's going to tell you that you need to do something here, but you continue and it tells you, yeah, you got to do this CSR certificate signing request. And that's how you can do it on a Macintosh. So we hit continue and upload a CSR file. So we're looking for a dot cert signing request or certificate signing re request and we need to choose that file. So on Mac you can just follow those instructions uh, but on the PC it's considerably more. So let's go find out what that is and what I'll do is back here we'll open up a text file. Uh, if I can find it, it's bubbling, that's that. I'll just uh, look for it here, mobile and phone gap build, okay. So this is mobile publishing, HCJ for HTML, CSS, and JavaScript as apps. And why don't we turn it on so that we can view the toggle soft wrap. I wish you made a hotkey for that. I probably could do that, but I mean, like, why the heck do I only have a hotkey for for that. And we're going to be using PhoneGap, or PhoneGap Build in particular, which shows the content in a web view. And there's some information on that. And what I can do for you guys, I think, probably is, is put this file somewhere so that you can see it, maybe tidy it up a bit. We'll scroll down. We're talking about uh, we're going to be using GitHub and PhoneGap. We've already been on GitHub. By the way, if you haven't got the GitHub app, then you want to go to github.com and install the, the app if you want. Like maybe you know how to use GitHub already and you're using command line and stuff, but I found I usually tend not to use command line if I've got a choice. Um, then there's PhoneGap build, which we'll take a look at later. Uh, here's information on how to get to the GitHub repository, which we've already done, and committing to GitHub. 
and then going into the phone gap build and setting that up, which we'll, we'll do later. And then getting key files from Apple iOS developer site. So become a developer and talks about that and what things you'll need to do. Great. We will have to find our UUID. We haven't done that yet. And that's um, instructions on how to do that. So that will be interesting. And now if you're a part of an Apple University, some things that you need, non-Apple University, you've got to pay and, and so forth. Okay, steps to do that. And then the Apple files, finally. At step 51, we can collect our Apple files. So we need to make a certificate signing request for Apple to be able to get a development or a distribution certificate. And that what that does is it um, makes sure that you're connected to your compute, like uh, it knows who you are and uh, so forth. So, I mean, it's that's okay. And then these are the instructions from Adobe on a Mac. You can use the keychain access, like so. I'm not going to go through the Mac instructions. They're, um, I think they're the ones that are on the site anyway, so it's probably easier for you to get this signing certificate request. But on a Windows machine, so here we are on a Windows, generate a certificate signing request on Windows. For Windows, first you need to do that, a CSR file using OpenSSL, or probably something else as well, but OpenSSL is free. So install OpenSSL on your Windows machine. You can get it at that, at binaries, and you can choose one blah, 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 full install, not the light. Uh, there was an option. I stored stuff um, in an open SSL folder, not in the Windows directories. So uh, no big deal. But basically, you go through the basics there. You may need to install the Visual C++ 2008 redistributable files. <laughs> OK. You do not need Visual C++ installed on your computer. So anyway, you go through that process. And unfortunately, to get this to work at different times, I've had problems with config files. So I had to copy an open SSL config file from the include open SSL folder to the bin folder to make this run. It's like, fuck, why couldn't you guys like make this just work? Uh, and then recently, I don't think I got that one. I got another problem. I had to debug that again. You know, there goes another hour. Recently, I had to copy the open SSL CNF file. I don't know what the difference between those two are from the bin slash CNF, which is in the open SSL, to a program files, common files, SSL directory. This message is saying, cannot find this. And it's like, oh, for fuck's sake to an SSL directory and make the SSL directory. And as soon as I um, copied the cont file from there into this SSL directory that I made, then it worked. OK, so hacking command line crap, blah, blah, blah. Just feel like you're a hacker and feel good about it, I guess. So uh, if that were to install correctly, it would be easier. But uh, there might be some things that you have to do to adjust that. Open a window command session, and then in Windows 10, my command session became some sort of PowerShell thing, and I was like, for sake, I can't, it didn't seem to work the same way. So it's like, arg. So I can show you how to get rid of, partially get rid of it. It used to be that we could just go to the directory that had the open SSL in it. Matter of fact, uh, we can go there now. We could right click on it or shift right click on it and say, uh, you know, oh, here it is, or browse the open SSL, shift right click and say open command window here and we'd be uh, all set to go. Well, now that doesn't seem to work anymore. Um, so in Windows, let's just take a look. In Windows, if we right click here, we've got command prompts now. And there's command prompt admin. I think you need to be in admin to make this stuff work. But in Windows 10, they've taken that away and they called it a PowerShell. And it's just not the same thing. So it just doesn't seem to work properly. I mean, maybe I don't know what I'm doing, but I couldn't make it work. So I wanted to get these things back. And I would have liked to get them back when I right click on the folder, because then I don't have to go from, you know, wherever this starts us off in the C windows or something. 
Anyway, to do that is more like a 30-step a uh, adjusting the registry type stuff. So you can go and do that if you want. And I kind of looked at it and went, oh, for fuck's sake, and just said, okay, I'll start from here. Because getting these things back is pretty easy. I'll show you how to do that. Um, we do a little search here for uh, control panel, I think. Or was it settings? I think it's settings. So we're looking for settings. And then we go... Mm, Personalization with it. Counts personalization maybe. Taskbar. Taskbar. And then down on the taskbar, if you scroll down, there is right here. Replace command prompt with Windows PowerShell in the menu when I right click the start button or press Windows logo key plus X. So you want to turn that off. So if you have it on, you don't you no longer have access to the command prompts just the PowerShell, but if you turn it off, then you do. So isn't that fun that they gave us actually a setting for that? Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to apply to the rest of the folders. It would be nice if it did. Okay, so now we can right click. If you've set that, we can right click and say Command Prompt. So here we go. And yes. So I'm into a Command Prompt, which we're going to be needing later. I'm in my systems32 folder, so uh, cd dot dot, sorry, that's going to be small for you, cd dot dot, going back a couple directories to the C drive, and I have happened to install my open SSL, if we do a dir here, dir, there's open SSL dash win64, so I can cd, and if I just say open star, I don't have to type the whole thing, and there's the directory um, we want to go to the bin, so cd bin. And there we are, um, dir. There's my directory of the bin file of OpenSSL in a command administrator prompt. All right, good. Um, now let's see, what else? Create a private key by entering the follow on, following on the command line. So uh, another thing that's undocumented for the most part is you need to set this RAND file before you can go on. You know, otherwise you get errors, can't do something, can't do something. And I had to look that up and actually put posted this to the Adobe site back a long time ago. We, we were doing this back in Flash you know, in 2008. That's almost 10 years ago. And th that got posted in the comments with, you know, thanks. Hey, thanks for finding that kind of thing. But now it seems to be gone and <laughs> the problem, problem still exists as far as I can tell. So you would copy that. So copy, control C. We go to the command prompt and you just right click. And when you right click, it pastes it in there and you hit enter. And that's a first step that seemed to be missing from everything. Who knows why? And then open SSL generate us out a my key dot key block. So you just copy that and you do the same thing. Now this will save a private key that you'll need later um, to, to work with. Okay. When oh don't ignore error messages, open L generates an error message, it may still output files, however, those files will be unusable. So if you see an error message, check your syntax and run again. So you create this, the CSR file by entering the following in the command line. Open SSL, request a new uh, key. Um, is this all one line or two? Uh, that, oh, that says give me a new key. Didn't we do that already? Or uh, let's just see. Yeah, we did that already. Open SSL required. Oh, that was generate a key. This is request a new key, it doesn't matter, out. Yeah, I think that's all, one. oh, this is wrapped. Yeah, that's all one line. So one of the, you see these two dots here, they're saying this is all one line. So um, this is saying with my key, I want you to make a signing certificate. And here you've got your email address. So you can put your email address in here. I don't think it actually matters And your name in here and your country in there. So all that is one line, you would paste that in. 
and then use the signing certificate uh, request file when asked to upload it. So with that file that you make, it becomes a certificate signing request dot cert signing request. With that, you would go into here and say, choose that file, please. So once you choose that file, uh, you get a certificate and you get one of these things. Bingo. Now, once you have one of those things, you download it. So you download that and save it somewhere. I actually download it to the same directory because we need to convert that. So you would download that to your SSL bin directory. And I think if we were to look, we've probably got that somewhere. Development identity PM. No, that's not it. There it is. So I asked development certificate we have there. And we need to create a PEM file from that, I believe. No, a P12. Uh, so yeah, the PM is a temporary one and we have to make a P12 is what's needed. That's a distribution. We need the iPhone development P12 file for Adobe PhoneGap build. Okay, so once you've downloaded that thing, we go to part two here, step 56. We also have to convert the developer and distribution if needed certificates for PhoneGap build. So PhoneGap and Adobe Air use P12 files. So here's the Adobe instructions. Convert the iPhone developer certificate to a P12 on a Mac. Okay, so we don't want to do it on a Mac, but there's how you can do it on a Mac. You guys may want to do it on a Mac. Uh, but I think the process is basically you just look at it in the keychain. You find it in the keychain and you say file export select file import I'm not sure why you'd have to import it um, and then select file export okay no you'll find it in the keychain and you just hit export and when you export it you make sure you export it as a p12 now you got to find the right file in the keychain thing there's a couple seemingly possibilities there are two possibilities I think you got to find the right one and when you right click on it you'll see export as a p12 and that's what you want to do on a Mac now you need to create a password at that time too, so you'll need that password for later. So convert an Apple developer certificate to a P12 on a Windows machine. So convert the developer that you received to a PEM file. So this is the first step to convert it to a PEM file. Run the following command from the OpenSSL directory. So in the same place, we run this command. We take the iOS development certificate, so whatever that's called. Um, actually, that this might be the wrong name. So whatever Adobe, I think they changed the name of it, unless I changed it here. I might have changed it here to match the, the name change from, not Adobe, from Apple. So when you grab your development certificate, it's going to be called something, and you put it in that directory, and that's what you put here. And you say out, make it a, yeah, I think I did adjust that, so I believe that's what it's currently being called. You want to get a development underscore identity. This doesn't really matter. This is what it used to be called. It used to be called an iOS developer identity dot sir or something like that. But anyway, uh, it doesn't really matter what this is called. And uh, so so we're good. Once you do this, you're going to end up with um, well, for PC. Open SSL PKS 12 export, uh, whatever your key is and whatever your PM is. So you're using your key and your PM that you've made in the last step, and you're going out to an iPhone dev P12. Now, it's going when you do this line right here, it's going to ask you for a password, and you type it in, nothing happens. You know, you're typing letters, and you know, nothing moves. So just trust it. You have to type your password. You're going to need this later. Type your password, and it's going to ask you to do it again once you hit enter. It asks you to do it again. You do it again. Nothing happens. You hit enter again, and that's it. So that will end up making you one of these files, an iPhone uh, dev P12. So the last time you had made your development identity PEM, and you did that from, your, uh, from what you downloaded from Apple, your certificate, you then finally make a uh, development uh, iPhone dev P12. 
there. All right, great. Signing keys and phone gap build. So now we need to take a look at phone gap build. So to go to phone gap build, we open up a browser and we go to build.phonegap.com, build.phonegap.com. And you'll need an Adobe uh, account for that. If you've got one already, then you can use that. And so I'll sign in. Doordanzen.com. Uh, and sign in. Uh, whatever. <laughs> okay, so here are previous apps done through Phone Gap Build. And now we want to make a new app right here. Phone gap guild build is currently seeing iOS build times during peak hours. We're working on okay, so whatever. A uh, new app, and we then say, uh, oh, by the way, under settings somewhere, there's probably a settings edit account. See, signing keys account. Uh, linked Adobe ID, great, and then also a linked GitHub account. So this, uh, under your account, you can link a GitHub account, which I've done to Dan Zen. And now we want to go back to our apps here. Did I make a new app yet? New app. And therefore, I can just find uh, from a pull down here my apps, and Tilty is right there. So uh, that's fine. And then I say pull from Git repository. So there we go. And hey, it's even got my icon there. We're sort of ready to go. Now, before you can build, like if I hit ready to build, or uh, I guess if I hit that, there it is saying, oops, iOS is broken. It's still trying some Android stuff, and it's still trying some Windows stuff. So there's Windows one made, and uh, Android's still waiting. If I click on the iOS, iOS, um, there it's sort of saying what the error is, and the error is the uh, signing key. The error is uh, the signing key is locked. You can fix this. So it looked like it was trying to use my, you know, the last touchy signing key that I had built, uh, which wouldn't work either because that doesn't match the app name and all this kind of stuff. So this is the wrong key. Uh, and those are some of the other keys. Add a key is uh, one option. So if we click that, another, so add a key would be good. Or all of our keys are located. If you go under edit account, it's a bit of a strange place, signing keys. So when you edit your account, you can go to signing keys. And there's add a key for the iOS. So we come down to add a key. Now they'll they'll lock after a certain amount of time and touchy three seems to be the default. So one of these is selected as a default key. That's why I tried to build it with touchy three. So we add a key and we will call it Tilty. Still don't know what version of Tilty I'm on. I probably should check that out. Uh, I don't think I yeah, maybe I'll just uh, quickly pop on over and see what version I am on. So I'm going to go into iOS, and this is the development uh, place, and hit the iTunes Connect, and go to iTunes, and just check out under my apps here. Uh, touchy, Tilty. So Tilty was at 2.1, so we'll call this one a... Um, a three as well. So I don't know how to get back to my development. Maybe I can go back through these things. Yeah, okay. All right, so I'm back into that place if I need to. And over on Phone Gap Build, we'll call this one Tilty 3 to just match. Then I need a certificate. Oh, actually, they haven't gone through and done, done these things yet. <laughs> okay, so uh, a certificate, the P12, I've, I've got, but I haven't made the provisioning profile yet. 
so great. I can browse for a P12, although I'm not going to be able to finish this yet. My P12 is back in the C drive. Mm, desktop, documents, uh, computer, C drive, open SSL, the bin, bin, and IOS development certificate. Does that sound right? Yeah, not the distribution, but the certificate. But it needs to be a P12, as it says there. So I need the P12 version of that, iPhone Dev P12. So I select that. Great. But I don't have my provisioning profile for that downloaded. I haven't built that yet. So let's go get our provisioning profile for Tilty then. So we come back to the Apple developer site. We come down to, I think, devices is all set. So uh, if, if not, you, you might need to create a device here. So you add a device. Ah, yes, you'll need to know how to do this. Register device, a name, and a UDID. Um, so here's the tricky part. How do you get a UDID? Well, you connect a device. Mm, I think there's an online service as well that will give you access to um, your UDID. Uh, I don't know particularly how to do that, but just be careful because it's not your normal serial number. So I've connected a device. I'm just waiting for iTunes to say, hey, here I am. So, so it's out of batteries. <laughs> Uh, great. Well, okay. Um, my device already, I mean, I'm, I've already got it. So we'll come back to that once my battery's charged. How does that sound? Uh, for now, I'm fine. Uh, that I'm probably looking at an iPod 3, I guess. That's my current one. Uh, although it's not an iPod 3, it's just my third iPod. <laughs> um, so let's go down to provisioning profiles. Oh, no, identifiers. We've already got Tilty. Let's just review that. Uh, you would want to um, be able to make one of those things. It's pretty easy to do. Well, let's show you. You hit the plus sign again up here. You say, what's the name of it? And then just leave that by default. And then explicit app ID here, it's your reverse domain name. So this would be com.danzen.tilty or whatever yours is dot your app name, which we've already done. And under app IDs, Tilty is just fine still. So uh, there is the one that we've done. Com.danzen.tilty actually needs to be that. Once you've made an app with that ID in the App Store, you if you make another ID, you're stuck with making another app. So it's got to be the same as it was. I'm updating Tilty to a new version here. All right, so under provisioning profiles then, we're ready to make a new provisioning profile. Now the provisioning profile can have a different name. As you see here, we've got Touchy, Touchy 2, Touchy 3. Now we've got Tilty and I'm about to make one for Tilty 3. So we hit the plus sign. Yay, we get to really do this. It's for development, not for the App Store. So it's not a distribution, it's for development. We hit continue. We choose which app ID, Tilty. We hit continue. We choose which certificate we're going to use. So there's my only development certificate. And that's got to be obviously, well, it won't even show up if it's expired. And we hit continue there. And then we choose which one, which ones we want to test on. So these are various devices that I have to test on. And we hit continue. And we give this a profile name. And I think we'll call it Tilty3 and continue. There we go. So this is now available to download. So we download that and we will save this file, save as, and I think that's just going to get saved into my, my downloads folder. As far as I remember, I think that's it. I don't think we have to convert that one. We used to, but um, we don't anymore, I believe. So we're going to come back to PhoneGap Build We'll browse for that and see if we can find that provisioning profile. So the provisioning profile is not in here, but rather in my downloads. 
There it is. Okay, so TLT3 mobile provisioning profile, and uh, hopefully that's good. TLT underscore three mobile provision. We got our iPhone dev from before. We submit the key. That's good. Otherwise, it would have told us, I think. Um, so TLT3 will make that our default. We'll also unlock it. So right now it's locked. And to do that, oh, look, it's asking for that password, which hopefully I remember what it is. And we'll set as default key. Oh, I thought I already did that. It's going to be open for one month. Submit key. Good. Now that is the password that you typed in twice into the invisible character field. Remember <laughs> back then? <laughs> okay, so you got to know that password so that you can um, unlock your key here. Now we go back to our apps right here. And we have under iOS, um, oh, Tilty 3 unlocked. Great. And we can hit rebuild. So now it's waiting. And if we did everything right, this will build. Uh, you've got, I would say, about a 25% chance of getting it right. <laughs> Usually it's um, a headache. I've You can see how many times I've done this. I've done this about, you know, 15 times or so. Well, more actually, because I've done it over in the Apple University any number of times as well. Go, go, go. Oh, yeah, this was saying, wasn't it, that um, some red thing? Currently seeing long iOS build times. Isn't that funny? Why would it be this morning, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m.? I've never seen that message before, but we're getting long build times happening. Uh, hopefully that'll just come back being accepted and oh hey while we're waiting up came my iTunes library so I don't want to download a new version of iTunes so here we are now when we go over to our device you see how to get to our device anywhere apps maybe uh, iTunes 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 I thought I got a little icon Browse, radio, store. Uh, download and update. Cancel. No, thank you. So, oh, there it is. Maybe that is that my computer? iPod Touch. Okay, good. Um, so I've clicked now to get to my computer. It is not the serial number, but if you click on the serial number, you catch that? Would you have guessed that by any chance? So you click on it, oh, and eventually there it is, a UUID. So we've sort of shown in iTunes, uh, our device has shown up. We've got a UUID. We seemingly have no way to select that to copy it. <laughs> but if you go Control C, that will actually copy it. So just have it selected there, go Control C, and this gives you access to that UUID. Do you remember where to use that? Well, go on over to the iOS if you were registering a device here. So we'll go to Devices and hit Plus. You can come down and now you can right click and say Paste. And there's that UUID there. And you would give that name for your device. Yay. And hit Continue. And once you do that, you would have a device here that says Yay, <laughs> along with your identifier. And then you can use that device to make your provisioning profile. Our provisioning profile is still being made. Now, normally this is done by now. It only takes, uh, you know, certainly less than a minute, more like uh, half a second, or half, half a second, half a second. It takes half a minute, so 30 seconds and you're done. Mm, which is too bad. Now, you'll have to go through a similar process for Android, but it's much easier, uh, although you have to have Java installed and a way to be able to go through and make a key with Java. Uh, it's not the end of the world. Just have a look up on the phone gap build how to make a signing key or provisioning or whatever a key for Android. Follow those instructions. You got to make sure you have Java, like I said. Yeah, actually the Java development kit. And then you go through a process, uh, which is also in that document that. I'll try and post for you guys.
Foam Gap build now is finished with uh, making the IPA file here. So uh, we used to grab that and drop it into iTunes and also have to drop our provisioning profile into iTunes. But there's now a way that we can install here or indeed take a picture with um, a QR code reader and that will start an install process. Uh, the QR code reader just gives you a URL and you press the URL and it probably says something failed, like loading failed inside the QR code reader. But actually, if you then go look at your screen, it's loading, you know, and progressing on your on your device there. Um, now, I've already gone through that process, and all I saw was a gray screen rather than the ball. So I think what, what needs to happen is I've gone back here into the index page. Let's just see how we can update things, the update process where because we were on full mode, I forgot um, as it adapts to the size of the mobile device, I believe my circle didn't get resized. It was sort of sitting off on the right perhaps or something like that. We'll, we'll see if that is indeed the case because all I saw was, like I said, a gray screen. Maybe what I'll do just to confirm that we're getting something is change the color. Uh, on a full mode, there is really no outer color. We came in from a fit template. So a frame dot color of DDD, we can try um, something. How about frame dot pink? And that should do it. Okay, so we've got a pink background. And what we've done is we've added a resize event. So frame dot on resize, we grab the new stage width and stage height. We then center the circle on the stage and we update it and we refresh here. Let's let's just open in a browser. Ugh, ugh. How about we change the color of that circle to be instead of orange frame dot blue. Let me save that and uh, do a refresh and see how that looks. Yeah, well, that's a little bit nicer. And if we resize indeed the circle is is moving and still draggable okay so that's great but now and so now we've made a change we have to go through the process of the phone gap build though which do i have that open uh, or sorry the um process of uh, github so on github we have saved it uh, we want to make sure that we're on tilty and here, uh, I click the most recent circle, and it says, yeah, that we've got an index. This is the update to the index. So we're on the, the most recent version here on the index. is telling us, oh, look what we did. We made, we deleted the outer color. We changed the color there. Can I increase the size of that font? Not really, no. And we changed that to blue, and we added these things. So things in green are the new things, and things in red are the old things. We provide a summary. Mm, added resize just like that and commit to master and then sync and syncing sends it from our local up to the github on the internet mm, syncing is done and now we can come into phone gap build right here and update code not a rebuild but an update code do you want to update the code from the re repo, the repository, and rebuild this app? Pull latest, and you hit OK. Now it's pulled the latest, and there it goes building our things where we're, uh, the repository has been updated and the build has been queued, where we were waiting a little bit longer than usual to get these things made. That's, that's like usual. What just came in there is sort of a usual time. And uh, this other one for iOS was taking a while. The phone gap build is now finished making the IPA, the updated IPA. And I'm taking a picture now of the QR code, which I only really need to do once. It's just storing a URL and that URL doesn't change throughout the process. But now it says build phonegap.com would like to install Tilty and we say install. And then it says frame load interrupted, but you hit OK. Uh, don't worry about that. And then I'm watching it, and now Tilty is loaded. 
So we're hoping with that resize that when I open this up, I now see a ball and I open it up and I only see gray. So it didn't change the, the color. It's kind of like a white, I guess it's white. I couldn't tell if it was white or gray. I um, don't see the ball. So there's something else is going on. We got an icon, that's great. I'm getting nothing showing up with our simple test, uh, which is probably the first time I've had nothing show. Well, I don't know, I may have had nothing show up before, but um, I'm kind of scratching my head. So I'm going back to something that had worked before, an older version of CreateJS and an older version of Zim. These are the ones that came from Touchy, which was uh, launched maybe a couple months ago. So we'll see if it has something to do with our modern libraries. We test this in a browser, and that looks the same. So we have to go through the upload process again. Oh, we made sure that there's a those files are in there, and I, I guess they're working, so no problem there. We go back to um, GitHub. We make sure, oh yeah, look, there's some new files for us. And some up, those are the updates, the changes we made. So we say, uh, caps lock not showing. So try older library, uh, older versions, I guess. And we'll commit to the master. And we'll sync. Everything seems to be working. It's just not um, not showing up when we view the app. I'm not even seeing a background color. This is a new CreateJS. I don't think really anything has changed in Zim that I would know of, but we may as well try the old ones. And then we come back to a browser. We update the code. The latest. And there she goes on the rebuild. All right, the IPA has been created by PhoneGap Build. We will go back to the QR code reader, hit uh, view URL, and there she goes, and load uh, install app, install app, close that. There it is installing, and the icon, click and it works. So now we have a big draggable blue circle with a pink background. <laughs> so what do you know? Um, it looks like then that the, there we, that one of these things is a culprit. Okay, shall we go back to a the new Zim library? So 6.4.0. So we'll try going with 6.4.0. We'll leave the old CreateJS. We'll save that up. We go back to the um, GitHub. <laughs> Got it right this time, just barely. We make sure we're on the right one. There's the index, there's the change. We say it worked. Try new Zim, and we commit to the master, sync it, and we come back to our browser, and not there, but here, and hit update code, pull latest. We do that, and they're on their way again. Well, uh, we now have a new IPA made by PhoneGap Build. So let's check this out on a phone. We come back to the QR code reader, and we open it up, and we got the blue circle. So it appears that it's the uh, new version of CreateJS version 1.0 is not showing up in PhoneGap build. Ah, um, uh, yes, I remember now. 
the new CreateJS, createjs.min.js version 1, which um, is just launching, I have um, the version from GitHub, but they're going to be launching a CDN version of CreateJS 1 on the Adobe CDN. The one that came from GitHub, I had already reported wasn't working on my device, and my device is in an iPod 6, so not the latest really, but and a couple operating systems ago. And so they said, oh yeah, yeah, okay, right, we didn't even test on that because it's old. And uh, they did say that they would look to see if they could um, patch that uh, before it gets posted to the CDN. So I'm still using one from back then and obviously nothing's changed. So I should have realized all along that that app wasn't going to work on that device. It does work, by the way, on an iPad, uh, iPad 2, Air 2 kind of thing. So yeah, I kind of already knew that. Um, however, we did go through the updating process, so all is not lost. We went through some debugging process, for instance. Um, if something's not working, go back to something that is working. Let's uh, just <laughs> we went back to something that's working. We knew this one worked. Let's try it with that. And we also saw how to load through GitHub and then rebuild in PhoneGap Build and uh, you know relaunch on our mobile device. That process. Let's do a bit of a summary. We were able to, in this video, we're able to uh, get this to show up on a mobile device, which is fantastic. So I'm dragging that around and it worked great. You know, put your finger on that, it starts dragging. So that's super. And we went through GitHub to do that. We saw back here how to set up our directories. And um, now these directories are, are needed in this, in this fashion. It's gotta be a www folder. It's got to have an index file in it and a config file. And all of that is for PhoneGap build to, to work. So we got that showing up in GitHub. Um, let's see, we also saw how to uh, load our, li our, our libraries there. So do those locally. Don't, don't do them. Don't require the person to have uh, internet connection when they don't really need it. So we can do all of this stuff locally probably. We also saw we made some icons and got those in there. Woohoo, yay, icons. And we use Photoshop and a script that uh, is available for you. So that's this stuff. And we updated to, let's go back to the browser here. We updated to GitHub. Uh, we then read through some a text document that led us, oh, and we also saw a diagram that talked about what, what's all happening here at the um, Apple developer site where we can get certificates and set up app IDs and device IDs and provi get provisioning profiles. Uh, those on Windows, the certificate needed to be converted or we had to make a signing certificate and all, all these kinds of steps that we had to go through. Um, so we did, we did those, it's cool. And then we, on PhoneGap Build, we brought in those things that we made, the provisioning profile and the certificate. We made a signing key. All of that stuff that you just saw there, and the iOS provisioning and the signing keys. Uh, if you were on Android, you would do something a bit easier. You would say signing keys. You'd go down to the Android section, say add a key. And you would make a key with Java, the Java development environment. And how to do that is pretty straightforward. You just go to the docs here and it tells you, it's got a page on how to get a signing key in Android. And you gotta go get your Java development thing and, and just run through a couple steps. Those steps are also in the text document and we'll see if I can post that text document somewhere, but uh, you know, have a look in the description of the video, for instance. So that was back in PhoneGap, and through that process, we then took a picture of this once, once we did our build, or you can download it by clicking on the link there. And that then leads to this, where it's, it's, it's moving around. That's super. Now, what we'll do in an upcoming video then, we'll continue on to build Tilty. We'll see how we can do responsive design or adaptive design so that this 
loads onto your different size mobile screens in a proper manner. And any other tips as we go to build Tilty. Tilty uses the accelerometer, so we'll be building that out in Zim. As you can see here in Touchy, uh, this is another one Touchy that we just built. I'll open up the index there. We're bringing in model view and controller to handle our things, so we've got um, a design pattern that we were working with, so we can show you that. We've got the different pages loading with the pages and uh, some resize going on. So that's our main script there. It's pretty straightforward. We'll be you know, building that out and then showing you what went into building the model, the view in the controller. Woohoo! Hopefully that's been good for you. It's been really exciting for, for us to be able to get mobile apps um, built with Zim and CreateJS. And we'll talk to you later. I'm Inventor Dan Zen at ZimJS.com. If you found the video useful, you're welcome to hit that little like button. And uh, look forward to the next videos. Ciao.